welcome to another video. Now, previously, I looked at how we can use Git Guardian CLI tool, ggshield, to implement a pre-commit Git hook that will detect secrets and block a commit if there is a secret contained somewhere in that Git commit. Today, we're gonna to do something similar, but we're gonna be installing it as a pre-push hook. Now, there are some advantages and some disadvantages between pre-commit and pre-push. The main one is that we can make a lot of commits before we make our push to our remote repository. And scanning all of these can be a bit of a blocker, particularly if we're not handling them correctly. So by installing it as a pre-push hook, we're actually scanning it at a point where we've got a collection of commits and we're gonna scan all of them in one go. So it shouldn't be a blocker for the developer. Now the disadvantage of this is that even though the secret doesn't reach our remote repository, which is a good thing, it is still in our Git history, which means if we do detect a secret, we're gonna to have to clean our Git history locally. Doesn't mean we have to revoke the secret. We would if it entered into our Git repository, but it does mean we do have to adjust our history and do some rebase. And I'll do another video on that step later. But for now, we're just gonna look at how we can set this up as a pre push git hook. So again, we're gonna be using the pre-commit framework. So the first step that we need to do is install the pre-commit framework. So I'm gonna use pip to do this. So pip3 install pre-commit. Okay, so we have installed that now. Now at this stage, we can also install ggshield if we wanna use some of the additional features, but it's not actually required because the pre-commit framework will still install ggshield in that instance uh, and it will run as expected, even if it's not installed locally on your machine. So now that we've installed the pre-commit framework, we can create a pre-commit configuration YAML file. So inside our repository, I just have a very simple example project here. We're gonna create a file called dot pre, pre commit config dot yaml. Now I know we're installing a pre push hook and I've, we just created a pre commit yaml file, but that's just because the framework that we're using is called pre commit, not because we're creating a pre commit hook. A little bit confusing. Okay, now we're gonna open up uh, this file we just created. And we're gonna to need to add some code in here that's gonna describe the hook that we want to create. Now, why we're using the pre-commit framework and not installing a generic git hook is because using this framework, it's quite powerful because we can create layered git hooks. We can do multiple different tasks and we can describe them all in this one YAML file. So you can head over to the pre-commit uh, website or GitHub repository to find out what other actions you can take. Right now, we're gonna go across into the GG Shield, uh, across into the GG Shield GitHub repo. And if we scroll down, we can go down to our pre-push hook, and it's gonna give us some code here. So we're doing it with the pre-commit framework. Yes, uh, we've installed the pre-commit. And so now we just need to pull across this code now, exactly the same way that I did this in the pre-commit video, if you've watched it, uh, I'm gonna change line three here. So we're saying revision main, that's just the latest version on our main branch, but we're gonna change it to an actual release number here. So right now we're on V1 10.7. So we're gonna put that in there, V1.10.7. So now that we've done that, we need to install our pre-push git hook. So we can do this by running the command pre-commit, install. Then we need to add the hook type and we're gonna put pre-push. We should run this and then you'll see that it's installed our pre-push commit here at .git hooks pre-push. We can actually see that hooks and then we'll see we have our pre-push commit here. So now that we've installed our pre-push git hook, we need to add in our Git Guardian API key. So ggshield leverages Git Guardian secrets detection engine. 
And this means that we can do validity checks on the secrets to ensure they're valid. Uh, we can detect over 300 different types of secrets, including uh, different types of generic uh, secrets. But this does mean that we need to transmit this data via an API. So to get that, we need to head over to dashboard.geekguardian.com. Uh, you can create an account in just a few seconds. It's totally free. And we can head down to the button that says API. Now, once we're in here, we're going to create new API key. So I'm just going to give this name uh, pre-push video. We're going to add the scan scope to this. We don't need to worry about the incident scope just yet. And this has created our API key. So we're going to copy this. Now, we can add this API key as an environment variable in a number of different ways. Uh, last video, I used the export command just to add it into my terminal session. But today, I'm going to use uh, a slightly better practice, and that is to add it into a .env environment variable file. So we're going to create that file inside our repository, .env. And we're going to paste that API key, and we're going to use the variable git guardian underscore API underscore key. And what this does is when our pre-commits or our pre-push hooks are run, it's GG Shield is going to look for this environment variable file inside our repository, inside our environment, and it's going to load it in as an environment variable. So this means that we don't have to worry about adding it to our bash RC or using the export command. Uh, we, can do, we can do it uh, automatically this way. But of course, uh, we do not want to leak our environment variable file. This is now sensitive. So we should always create a .git ignore file. So I'm going to open my .git ignore file. And we can see in here that I've just added a .env file. You can get some great templates of GitHub for .git ignore files. I just have the one file. And this just means that it's not going to be added into my git commit stash. So I'm never going to leak the secrets that are inside this environment variable file. So a very important step if we're using .env files. So we've now installed our pre-push commit hook. We've added in our API key, and we've installed the pre-commit framework. Now we're ready to test our git hook. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up my file config.py. And I'm going to paste in here an AWS credential. This is actually a real credential, but it doesn't pose any risk. Uh, it's essentially a, a dummy key. So it means that I can leak this with no troubles, but it also means that it should definitely trigger an alert uh, from the Gigardian engine. Right, so now that we've loaded in that, we can, we can add this into a commit. So git add config.py, and then we're going to create a new commit. And we can see that this has been committed with no trouble. Now, this is different from the pre-commit hook, which would have been blocked. So we can go ahead and continue working within our project. So I'm going to create some other files here. Just a couple of files that you may expect in a project like this. And we're going to add these And we're going to add these in, and we're going to commit these as well. Oops, I can't spell git. So we can see that these have gone through, and in a real life scenario, we'll have multiple commits. But now I'm just going to go ahead and push these and see what happens. So we can see that the pre-push command was run. It failed. Now, this means that these haven't gone to our remote repository. And it also lets me know uh, information about what has triggered the fail. So we can see in our config file, we have an AWS key. We also have a validity check. So this is saying that this is actually a valid credential. So if we were to randomly change some numbers, this would change to invalid. So we can see that we've successfully installed this pre-push hook. Now, there may be a scenario where you still want to push this secret in. Perhaps it's a dummy or example uh, credential or secret. Uh, perhaps it's a false positive. And you don't want to have to 
keep dealing with this. So we have some great features from ggShield. So I'm actually going to install ggShield onto my local machine now. So I'm going to go with pip3 install ggShield. And that has now been installed. But again, this isn't required just to use the pre-commit hooks. So this is cool if you want to rapidly distribute this uh, throughout an organization, then we just need to install the pre-commit framework and not ggShield. But there are some other advantages to using features within ggShield. For example, I'm going to run the command now, ggShield ignore last found. And what this does is it creates a new file here called .gitguardian.yaml. And when we open it up, this has secrets that we essentially want to ig ignore or let through the detection process. Now the cool thing about this is it uses a SHA token and not the actual secret. That means that this file isn't sensitive in itself. You can commit this file into your Git repository so that everyone ignores the same secrets but we won't actually disclose any sensitive information about the secrets. So we match up those secrets using a SHA value. So that's quite a cool feature. And we have it here that we have an AWS keys inside this config.py file. So if I save this now, we can actually go back to the last step and push. And we will see that this time it's passed. It's let the commits through because the only secret it found is on our safe list, if you will. Now, within this YAML file, we can actually ignore secrets in another way. We can ignore them in files themselves. For example, if I wanted to ignore all of the readmes that are in this, I can run the command. I can add into here the code. And then all files that are named readme.md will be ignored and they won't be scanned. So perhaps if you have example secrets in your readme files, you don't want them to be scanned, you can add them to this ignore list. We can also add file paths in here. For example, if I wanted to add the file path here, if I wanted to ignore all of the secrets in a file called examples, then I can do that. And now this won't scan any files that are in this example folder. And lastly, if I just want to ignore a specific file in a specific location, I can add that specific file uh, and its specific path into this file too. So there's some ways that we can also ignore secrets using the Git Guardian YAML file. So there you have it. That's how we can set up a pre-push Git hook using GG Shield. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember, good code is secure code. Till next time, thanks everyone.